question of the day. The theme for this segment is tourism and technology. It is my pleasure now to invite national party leader and member of parliament from Toranga, Honorable Simon Bridges. <coughs> Honorable Bridges has held several ministerial portfolios, including Minister of Transport, Labor, Energy, Communications, Economic Development, and Leader of the House. As the new leader of the National Party, Simon understands the importance of a strong economy for Kiwi households, helping lift wages and create jobs, while also looking after the environment. So please welcome Honourable Simon Bridges. Namaste. Satria Kaal. Kia ora. It's great to be with you this afternoon. Can I just uh, make a few uh, cursory acknowledgements because I know so many of you are distinguished guests. Uh, first and foremost, w welcome to New Zealand, all of you who are st distinguished guests who've come from India. Uh, it's fantastic to have you in our country. Can I also acknowledge uh, National Party members of Parliament, Kalmuljit Bakshi uh, and Palmjit Palmer, uh, two of three uh, Indian uh, members of Parliament born in India uh, in the New Zealand Parliament, and I'm proud that they are part of my uh, uh, party, the New Zealand National Party. Can I say it's great to be back here, albeit in opposition. I've now uh, spoken at this, I think, several times, uh, and uh, from a variety of portfolio uh, perspectives. Uh, I think that the INBC and the summit in particular is the premier India-New Zealand trade uh, 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 forum. It's been going uh, since, and I haven't been coming all this time, 1989. And uh, that's worth celebrating, doing a great job at building relations between our countries in a commercial as in a trade sense. Uh, I, as I say, I've always enjoyed speaking here and just listening before hearing what are very fruitful discussions that we know will bear fruit uh, for our two great uh, countries. Um, can I say the INBC uh, and also the Indian community in New Zealand and more than that India and our relationship with India are incredibly important to the National Party, uh, to the party that I'm privileged to have led now for about six, seven months. And we are very excited about where the relationships come from, uh, where it is today, uh, and where it's going. But there's definitely a sense of urgency from us and a need to pick up the pace and keep going and moving with the opportunities that present themselves. I am and the National Party is unequivocally pro-free trade. We believe that it is good for countries, it allows specialisation, it allows to build more prosperous communities and societies. And more than that, I'm pro a comprehensive quality FTA between New Zealand and India. And, you know, it just makes a lot of sense. We are talking about... Uh, in Indian terms, by 2020, fifth largest economy uh, in the world. Already from a low base, but today $1.3 billion in two-way trade. It's particularly exciting to see the services side of that trade relationship double uh, in recent uh, times. And so free trade specifically good is good. But for New Zealand and India, I think that specific free trade agreement would be a great one. And I believe, some of you might say I'm far too optimistic, but I believe one day we'll have one. Uh, I believe one day we can do that. National started the negotiations for one in 2011. But I'll tell you what I know with these things. And that's this, both sides need to want it. Both sides need to want it, and without some urgency, uh, and without some effort from both sides, it won't happen. I believe, as I've said in free trade generally, and free trade specifically for India and New Zealand, um, 
And the value will be from this agreement both ways. I think sometimes, if I can be very frank with you, there's a sense in India, well, is it worth it? Four and a half, one day, five million people uh, at the bottom of the world. But it seems to me we have incredibly complementary things to offer each, each other. Obviously radically different in terms of our size, uh, our scale, uh, where we're at in our stages of development. But I think in terms of those markets, the skills, uh, there is much to offer each other. And so I want to be very clear with you uh, today that National would put renewed effort and vigour into a free trade agreement. Indeed, we believe we were gaining momentum, particularly in 2016, 2017. My friend and colleague Todd McClay, the then Trade Minister, uh, felt that very strongly. Of course, the New Zealand-India relationship is far from limited just to a discussion about free trade and the getting of that agreement. Uh, there's a Maori saying for those of you from offshore, it's used a lot in New Zealand, actually possibly uh, too much for domestic audiences. But it says, what is the most important thing in the world? He tangata, he tangata, he tangata. It's the people, it's the people, it's the people. And I'm very proud, very excited by the Indian diaspora to New Zealand. It's been a long run thing. Uh, and all that Indians and the Indian community has added to New Zealand, I think about my electorate of Tauranga, where from humble beginnings, primarily actually from the Punjab region, we have seen now actually many thousands of Indians come to the Bay of Plenty, uh, first in kiwi fruit, then through into retail, and now running all manner of businesses and being a vital part of the community. And that people-to-people -people relationship, of course, doesn't stop there. The fact we've got Indians in New Zealand who can be our ambassadors uh, back in their home country of India, I think helps and leads to Indian uh, New Zealand business opportunities. I want to give you a sense of an example of that. Literally in the last month or two, I was with Kamal Jid and Palmjit, and we were at uh, the Gandhi Centre here in Auckland. And some great young people, I don't know what you think's young, to me, 40's young these days. Uh, once upon a time, that was incredibly old. Uh, but I met these uh, great young people, born in India, long time in New Zealand, and they have set up, uh, in fact, they hadn't at that point in time, they literally have in the last month, the Rainbow Corner Early Learning Centre in Mumbai. And effectively what they've done is they came to New Zealand, uh, they uh, uh, got into early childhood centres here in New Zealand, they learnt the pedagogy, the way of teaching in New Zealand for very little children that is different from anywhere really in the world, and they're now literally exporting that to India. And as I say, they've opened their first centre uh, in Mumbai, uh, they have quite ambitious plans to roll it out, and who knows, they may be the next Montessori or Rudolf Steiner movement or something there in India with that scale. And so far it sounds like it's going very well. That's but one example of what are many, and I see some of you in this room, I was talking with one of you outside there about the aviation work you're doing with India. The, the opportunities from the people-to-people -people contact from our Indians in New Zealand is very exciting and we need to keep it uh, going. Today's theme, of course, is aviation, tourism and technology. And uh, I wouldn't claim to be an expert in any of those areas, although I have been the minister in New Zealand in two of the three. Uh, so that gives me something of an inside running. In relation to aviation, I'm incredibly proud, actually, as Transport Minister for New Zealand uh, for several years that I signed and that our government worked hard on getting and, as I say, achieving an open skies agreement with India. It's not the same thing as commercial flights happening, 
but it is a precursor to many of them uh, happening. And that one in particular uh, that I signed with one of the ministers of the Indian government here in New Zealand, look, a number of years ago when your president at the time was here, allows for direct flights between our countries. I, I want to say to you, I believe personally, build it and they'll come. There's a commercial opportunity there for someone there, given the massive population uh, in India, given the tourism uh, opportunities here, but actually also the interest, I think, in New Zealanders that will grow uh, in India over time. And there's an opportunity for someone to be the first uh, to build that market. Personally, I can say to those of you from India, I hope it's in New Zealand. Uh, I really do. I'm going to try their fake meat burger uh, if I get the chance. Uh, but there is an opportunity there for someone to do that. It would be a game changer uh, for tourism. The convenience of it, I feel certain if the market is built and the work is done, uh, will be, as I say, a game changer for our countries. Obviously, tourism is important to New Zealand. In New Zealand today, a tourism alternates between our first and our second uh, most significant sectors. And for India, uh, and dealing with India, India is New Zealand's 11th most significant market. Actually, that's not bad. That's more than doubled since 2011. 61,000 uh, Indians came here uh, for holidays uh, last year. Um, they're staying longer than many others from other countries that come here. And I note, by the way, uh, as part of the broad picture, uh, many young Indians coming here to study in our private uh, international education uh, institutions. And I, for one, uh, contrary to some on the other side of politics in New Zealand, think that's an excellent thing that's part of that people-to-people -people connection we have uh, as countries. We've already put a lot of effort into the relationship. Uh, actually, uh, Siddharth Moholtra, uh, an incredibly famous Bollywood star, has been here. He's been all over uh, New Zealand, and it's initiatives like that that have helped market New Zealand to India. But there's definitely renewed opportunities if we dig in, uh, in terms of growing the numbers, growing the value uh, with the rising middle and wealthy uh, classes of India. A final word of warning on all of that. There's a phrase, uh, I'm not sure how it translates in India, uh, cheap and nasty, that we use in New Zealand. And New Zealand's tourism will never uh, be described so, or in those terms. But what we don't want to be as a country is ex expensive and not as good as the price we're charging. It'll actually only take a few reviews from disgruntled journalists who've been here on trips and found the quality of experience not as good as the prices being paid. And we'd have a real rep reputational risk. And so I think as New Zealanders, we need to guard against complacency and strive to have both price and quality going well. That is, in terms of price, that value, uh, rather than just lopping on taxes, as I concerned this government's doing with the tourism tax, we'll be monitoring that and checking it very closely. And in terms of quality, making sure that this government continues on with the work we did with hotels, uh, operators uh, and the, the like. The screen is flashing at me. So in fairness to my friends on the panel, I'm going to stop. But can I thank you for having me here today to represent the National Party to speak of our <coughs> strong sense of value in the India-New Zealand relationship, both Indians in New Zealand, but the ability to do things between our two great but very different countries and leave you with this parting thought. There's a huge amount of goodwill between our countries, but we need to guard against complacency on both sides. We've got to push in. We have to actively collaborate with some urgency and some vigour. If we want to make sure that the potential of 
more people to people relationships, more trade, more businesses like that early childhood centre I told you about, more flights and direct ones at that, and more collaboration uh, in, in ICT and technology and aviation and tourism are to happen and to happen sooner and more deeper than they would otherwise. Thank you very much for having me today. It's great to be with you. Um, thank you, Mr. Bridges. Uh, we understand you do have to catch a flight, so before we bid him farewell, could I please request uh, INZBC INZ board member, Ms. Joe Pennychuk, to come on stage and do the honors of handing out our token of appreciation. Thank you. Thank you.